uh, the entrepreneurial and livelihood mm-hmm. program we started almost around 10 to 12 years back formally we have started this hdc as a center in uh, 2016 now it's almost uh, three years over and we have spread our centers in 18 state having 85 centers which is now have trained over 50,000, I mean, youth in different, I mean, there are about uh, 45 different skill courses we have trained. Now coming to Vinyam, we were been doing this uh, skilling program for the uh, last three years, uh, where our main focus was more on to the unorganized, uh, the fishing community and the other underprivileged categories, how best the youth as well as the women can be trained and placed in many of the industries NSDC courses, which were, I mean, on catering, on uh, welding, on automobile technicians, on beauticians, and basically level three, level four courses. And around in the last three years, we could train around 6,000 people in and around Virginia, where we could find them some kind of a job prospects for them. But uh, when you look into the COVID scenario, there it demands some of, I mean, uh, putting some kind of agenda for us to see how best we have to focus in future. So one area where we were targeting last three years was on digital literacy, creating a digital literacy platform. So with the COVID aftermath also, recommending and requesting to see how best our community people, our youth needs to be empowered on digital literacy platform. It's not only in terms of understanding about business transaction or online transaction or identifying some sort of uh, bill payments and even the youth community or fishing community may able to manage that kind of online transaction that was a wonderful program which able to set up but future it also demands how best online jobs could be captured by our young population who could get into the entrepreneurship model or even some kind of uh, of uh, uh, business through online courses which can manage so that is one area where we can focus in our covid after that situation second we generally feel that you know if you generally look on to the indian scenario or international scenario there is a total kind of um, uh, down in the industry sector especially on hospitality or travel and tourism retail all these sectors are i mean affected by this uh, covid after situation Maybe some area which we can really focus is on health sector. The construction sector, although uh, may not be, I mean, uh, uh, there may be some kind of uh, reduction happens, but we can even train on the construction sector. And even you can see that now the migrant population, I mean, migrant workers are moving back to their homes. So how best our local, I mean, youth can be trained and uh, engaged in the construction industry. That's also one of uh, the area where we can look. Health industry, definitely health. I mean, our health people are always been accepted, recognized across not only India, but across. So that's an area which we can even further look into how best uh, that area can be captured. The logistics, which is one of our area. In fact, uh, if you really look at logistics, we are one of the largest, uh, I mean, port operators in India, where, uh, in fact, when Virinium comes into play, when the Virinium port is uh, going to be operationalized, that time there will be a huge requirement of people who are mainly into logistic area. So, in fact, we have categories about different, uh, I mean, category of people on based on their skill set, based on their education, what kind of opportunities which can be catered to them. So, under community skill park that we are tying up with, uh, I mean, government or even the partnership model that we are developing, where one of the focus area is on logistics. So, in logistics. In fact, we have identified around 24 different kind of, uh, I mean, sectors where we can have our young population from, I mean, basically from Trivandrum district who can be taken and trained and placed, which can be of three months or six months courses. I mean, uh, in fact, in Vidinium, what the port which is going to visualize is more of like a mechanized port. I mean, it's one of the smart food we are, I mean, uh, uh, futurizing. So this port might be having high-end sophisticated equipments and high-end technology which we are going to put here. So what the training should also be to capture to whatever the requirements of port. Our, I mean, those who, if as you rightly pointed out after code, there may be a good number of people who are uh, returning from um, and other countries. That can be one of the focus area. The other area is our own people, whether it is engineering college, MTech or BTech or even our degree, and even our diploma ITA students. So when we look onto these, I mean, different category of people, 
uh, but whether they are right now fit into these kind of opportunities is a challenge so definitely uh, i mean we cannot tell the academy people directly to take care of these kind of courses is not possible because we know that academy have its own uh, different kinds of uh, i mean pedagogy and methodology to fit into their curriculum and uh, training on that so I mean, that is an area where we find that the community skill park can cater best to our industry demands. So it's not only for the Virginian port, but it can also be for all other, I mean, port business, business across India, even international level. And to be frank, we have our own presence across India and 18 states. And we're also looking for other industry demands, which is coming from nearby industries and our other, I mean, major business area of what particular sector so i can also go through whatever the i mean uh, major focus area on logistic maybe uh, after uh, your interaction on that if i continually i mean uh, taking this as a session then it might be not maybe uh, good for everybody to communicate i will come back on this i mean the programs what we are taking on this uh, uh, logistics later but I'll be uh, making, I mean, for your comments, and then I'll take further into that. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir, for those introductory remarks. Uh, uh, we have uh, rightly uh, uh, positioned Adani in this whole scenario as to where opportunities lay in terms of uh, port operations, logistics. So it is uh, from your uh, brief presentation, I understand that the port which is going to come up is going to be a smart port, the machinery which is will be high end and all. And uh, I also understand that uh, there will be a lot of opportunities for uh, upskilling or reskilling. So the the, the uh, initiative of Adani with ASAP uh, through the community skill park, I think there is a huge opportunity to engage uh, in the area of upskilling and reskilling of those uh, people who are returning from with, with some experience in port operations and we may we may need to upskill them so and uh, also you mentioned that uh, adani is also involved in 24 different sectors so apart from logistics which is the other major sector in which adani is involved in would you please tell us yeah uh, in fact uh, i mean the 24 different sectors is not actually the sector 24 different kind of uh, opportunities which uh, I mean, need at logistics sector. So that uh, different based on the qualification, based, I can tell you, for example, if you look on the plus two, those who have passed the plus two, what are the opportunities which can come? This we need to register in the minds of you that what you can get as an opportunity here. For a plus two, a plus two past student, I mean, there are opportunities which may come in truck operator, then checker or lasher, what we called, uh, I mean, those who are look on to the containers and uh, it's a locking system, equipment cleaner, security guard, housekeeping, STP operator, mooring crew. These are the categories where we are looking for, uh, I mean, the basic qualification. Too. And we can definitely, we need to train them for another three to four months time to engage in the port to carry those functions. But if you really look on to that ITI and uh, diploma, I mean, who are been coming out from our industry. I mean, we have a good uh, technical system in Kerala, no doubt on that. But I mean, they need to be fine tuned and as a finishing school of uh, training we have to do. So in fact, uh, in our port, we are looking for uh, ITI and diploma courses uh, students, basically into the opportunities which is coming in uh, this, you know, that uh, rail mounted crane mm -hmm. operators, I mean, crane operation is one of the area where, uh, I mean, uh, we need to have uh, more training. It can be mobile crane or gantry crane, even forklift operator and reach taker operator, tug operator. So these are areas where we can have train our ITI and diploma people into, I mean, in fact, uh, since the CSP is also planned very adjacent to the port uh, area itself, mm -hmm. it will be very helpful to have a academic session as well as the practical session, which having a live demo of what is happening in the port and get directly inducted into the, I mean, area of operation. Sorry for then, interrupting you. Uh, I think this is right. one area in which we are going to get a huge influx of uh, trained manpower from the Middle East, especially in the area That's of uh, uh, operation, the, the technical operators of uh, trains and all heavy machineries. So do you think that the people who are coming back from the Middle East 
they will be of uh, use in these particular operations or would you uh, would you recommend starting some new skill program to train or uh, give finishing skills to the iti diploma graduates yeah you are uh, very well pointed out it, it is like uh, how best this is an idea we need to think how best we can give an opportunity to the i mean the our uh, young population and at how best uh, the experienced people service can be used so i mean this we may have to see how best both these can be i mean uh, directed to this particular positioning uh, in fact you rightly pointed out we can use many of the i mean experienced people who are uh, coming from outside but to be frank you know now we are not in a position to tell that when we can operate it so that that will take at least some uh, at least some point of time because although we plan to operate uh, uh, plan to have the operational in principle by 2019 december due to different factors you know it has been delayed and it can further delay for some more time so after that only we can definitely go for this kind of an exercise but fact, before that we can... a, in fact there is a question also from one of the participants as to how covid is going to affect the operationalization of virinya port how far it is going to impact that's true i mean Uh, across across in the uh, construction and industry sectors it is uh, having I many it is affected so uh, right now i'm not in a position to tell that uh, how badly it is affected or what kind of uh, uh, may hamper to again get into operationalized that things are i mean under i mean under scrutiny and uh, that is under process but uh, affected that's what uh, i mean straight away i can tell and even now also you can or i mean our construction workers are moving for their i mean uh, state to i mean that migrant laborers they also we have to consider them with the humanity our uh, government and uh, district collector everybody is supporting to have a humanity for the i mean and their workforce so that we also have to consider it very positively so you so you are you are talking about the low and technical jobs uh, in, uh, uh, of for which the basic qualification is it and diploma so what about those uh, uh, middle and uh, high end jobs like where engineering graduates are required so do you think that the present courses which are going on in engineering colleges that will serve the purpose or do you see some new course which has to be offered in the engineering colleges yeah uh, i mean uh, right now we can say what we have visualized in logistics and port based uh, ecosystem wherever that uh, b tech b students uh, i mean uh, will get an opportunity can briefly tell not into other sectors because this is an area where we are right now being highly what uh, uh, capacitated so in fact for b tech be or even uh, uh, students from uh, high, uh, i mean uh, courses uh, the opportunities which comes more around yard crane operators yard supervisors then tower controller yard planner shift charger then it coordination because this is more of a smart port that i have told right so in fact uh, those kind of area we were be looking for i mean uh, uh, engineering graduates who are having bit of experience is good otherwise also i mean we can have a training program through this uh, csp design for them in fact our uh, port at krishna patanam uh, krishna patanam we are doing uh, courses on uh, this forklift operator then even for port based management port based operations even uh, port based planning all these are i mean uh, b or b tech students needs to be uh, these are like uh, six months to nine month courses so the similar system we can think and we can plan it for uh, our uh, people here also and sir uh, recently the honorable chief minister of kerala had declared that the state is going to have some logistic skill parks spread across the state so uh, i assume that is mainly for uh, creating jobs as well as for boosting uh, logistics operations is there any park uh, emission in trivandrum do you have any idea sir uh, right now that we have not discussed in the on that but definitely we'll see because logistics is being one of the biggest area and even our uh, what is going to be operationalized mm -hmm. that can be a potential area where we definitely have to pitch mm -hmm. into and get the maximum i mean support and so there is a question from uh, one participant uh, the person is asking uh, what about the opportunities for humanity students is there any opportunity as such because we have been talking about technical students engineer students right right right, right. 
Right. Well, boss, even I may be the right person to tell that because I'm also having a background on that. Uh, right. I mean, uh, all these companies, even uh, Adani or any companies, now you know that a corporate social responsibility is one of the, I mean, biggest arm and tool of all the companies. So definitely, uh, here also, I mean, in Vidinyam, there is a hundred crore of, from government as well as Adani group is being set apart for the welfare activities of communities in and around. So definitely, that needs to have social workers and uh, professional humanity of the sociology or having a kind of uh, uh, grassroots level experienced people uh, are needed for many of those works. I mean, right now there is a good number of people are being engaged in the local community development and sustainable development projects. In future also, uh, it may be look for more kind of uh, professional service, uh, which may spread across, uh, I mean, uh, 10 to 15 kilometers radius from so that time we may look for more, I mean, people who can engage in. And we are also planning to create a platform whereby some kind of social planners, I mean, social engineers and volunteers who can come contribute and think. So that kind of a system, I mean, we can think about. Definitely there will be, I mean, uh, opportunities where the social workers, I mean, and uh, sociologists can play a role. Uh, sir, and also the, the, there are a few questions about uh, opportunities for uh, uh, BR students and also those students who are uh, whose uh, academics academic uh, uh, activities have been disrupted this year so they, there are no placements as we understand so there is a lot of uncertainty as far as that population is concerned so do you have anything to tell about that right now from Virginian context uh, I'm in a position to tell uh, that because you know we are also in a construction phase and it is not the right time to get any kind of opportunities here we have our own adani.com which is uh, our uh, i mean uh, uh, head office having all the opportunities i mean where uh, many requirements are coming on uh, architecture or in planning section even structural engineer and basic domains i mean those areas we can maybe probably explore and uh, those kind of system we have our our own centers across i told that around 85 centers we are running across in india for uh, skilling as well as getting them to the employment area maybe that area we can explore later uh, sir what how do you envision the scenario when the uh, virinium port would be fully operational and uh, the 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 kind of ecosystem that that would be developing around say uh, how the universities have to respond to that how the engineering colleges have to respond to that how the itis have to respond to that and our own community skill park where you will be partnering with we will also be doing something so a whole new ecosystem as far as logistics is concerned would be emerging in that area true true I mean, that is the area where, I mean, we should have more of an academic linkage and academic engagement uh, into the what the opportunities and what kind of skill set uh, our uh, students needs in the, I mean, modern industry, in the smart, I mean, industries where uh, more of like this, I told that this is more of like a mechanized port. And uh, uh, there uh, we need to have uh, some kind of uh, academy uh, engagement especially with the technical universities and uh, our uh, our uh, ita students and other uh, i mean uh, uh, vocational training centers and, uh, as uh, let me let me put in, in a different like uh, what where the virinium is positioned or where, where the virinium is placed uh, in now in the logistics sector i mean this is the first motherboard which is going in uh, in india so, I mean, I, you know, you, everybody might be knowing what's a motherboard. Here, the motherboard in the sense that we are looking for large vessels which can be get into Virinium uh, because it's having a natural depth of 20 meters and it's around 12 nautical mile from the ship route. So, first time, even we have around 200 uh, minor and major ports in India, but uh, almost 60 to 70 percentage of uh, all the transshipment container business are happening in, uh, I mean, Singapore, uh, Jabal Ali, and even uh, Colombo ports. So how best all these business can be get into India through Virinia. So the Virinia will be the hub for many of these business. So we cannot, in fact, directly attract many industries, uh, many businesses, and even uh, the transshipment terminal, which can also be slowly converted into a gateway which will open many industries to come and play. 
definitely that kind of industries needs to have a i mean a, a trained people and we should have that kind of an ecosystem to be discussed and developed with our or uh, what technical universities how best that can cater i mean one is at the port the port will have a limited you know that once we place people it will be a limited scope but the huge scope is on the other industries which are going to play a big role here okay. and there are a lot of questions from different quarters about the, the opportunities for different branches but for your convenience i would like to put it in a different way like uh, you already mentioned that uh, right now adani is in construction stage and you are not looking at a huge man for recruitment also because construction work is going on so i understand that the, the uh, man for requirement is uh, now satisfied because adani itself and can take care of the operation construction operations but once the port starts getting operational there will be more opportunities in different areas like management like in um, logistics like in uh, commerce and many other areas so would you be able to tell us about the uh, approximate demand projections as far as these areas are concerned once this port becomes operational say one year from now or one and a half years from now yeah i mean that's like a, i mean a business proposition we have to foresee what are the areas and uh, I mean, in fact, uh, there was a study which was uh, done earlier on what are the opportunities which can be come across, and even now also there is a study going on how the total, uh, I mean, uh, uh, total uh, township development is going to happen in uh, in Virginia and in Trivandrum city as part of this uh, uh, port business which is going to come. But let let's that study happens and then uh, we can scientifically put what are the areas. Although we know that uh, once the port is there, uh, the warehousing and uh, other industries. Many people from technician, even to the organized sectors, starting from cleaning industry to the safety industry, then the transportation. Yeah, so all these areas from grassroots level, from the I mean unorganized sectors to the organized and education sector, which will have uh, different opportunities. Which uh, right now I'm not in a position to tell what actually because uh, that needs to have a very scientific and very very categorical study to explain in detail. So I hope the the community skill park in Birmingham which uh, will be coming up soon uh, with Adani as the operating partner. Maybe there will be uh, more such input from such studies and uh, it will be uh, doing training pro programs in order to skill the local population and population from around so that the, the demands are met. Is that right, sir? That's true, right. In fact, uh, I mean, the community skill park is not uh, only for uh, the port or port related courses, as you rightly pointed. It's basically for all the i mean industrial requirement demands it's how best uh, our uh, young can youth can be connected to the industries and how best the industry needs can be catered through in a smart way so that way one way like uh, the port, what are the port areas what are the demands and requirements coming that we can look on to it from time to time and definitely that training programs and the requirements can be taken up through the csp that's one potential area as a captive placement area which we can and uh, uh, straight away look into but at the same time, uh, we have to look into the other areas, which is, as uh, rightly pointed out, on the health sector, and not only in port area, but in the other states also, we can see how best that kind of opportunities can be yeah, captured. And sir, uh, now we have been talking mostly about Adani operations, uh, logistics, and port. Coming, uh, coming away from that, because we have a sizable population uh, having different interests, having different concerns, so how would you uh, uh, comment on the scenario of jobs and career, the general context after COVID or what skills would be uh, very important when it comes to the post-COVID era, preparing graduates and uh, postgraduates for the jobs that would be available? Yeah, that's true. In fact, uh, uh, in Kerala, I think um, uh, there are many studies have been conducted by NSDC, I think if Deloitte has done it, then Confederation of Indian Industry has done a study about uh, the aspiration level of youth. And now if you look on to the COVID scenario, how best that aspiration is matching with the aftermath of COVID, that's re really a tricky and a challenging question. Uh, 
uh, we know that many areas might be need some time to resume, especially in the hospitality tourism sector. It will take its own time to boom into the actual business. But there are at the same time some other areas which may have be right need to have train and place like a, uh, as we discussed earlier, like health sector, how best that health sector can be further encouraged uh, to, to ensure that we have a good population can be get into not only locally, but uh, across how best. So that is an area where we have proved and we have a significant achievement, which can be further strengthened uh, through our uh, training programs. Second is definitely, I would say that the construction industry, because uh, I mean, Kerala was a place uh, where about uh, I mean uh, 30 to 40 lakhs of migrant uh, I mean workers were serving in Kerala for the uh, industry purpose. So in the construction sector. So now the question arises whether uh, there is a change in uh, mindset which uh, which can uh, come into our, uh, our people like whether we can have our own construction fraternity trained and engaged uh, in the contract works. So that may be uh, another area where we need to make it what thought process and see how best that captured an automobile as such but uh, also automobile sector is i mean the sales and other service areas may be a little affected but the existing service areas repair maintenance mechanism needs to have further i mean people to be engaged so these areas i feel that uh, there we can have further engagement of our uh, population but at the same time uh, uh, beyond focusing Sector, I would say that uh, we need to promote IT and ITS are uh, looking on to the COVID after scenario because that is an area where uh, we have to train our people how best our uh, IT system can be used to tap the resources, convert ourselves into good entrepreneurs and get ourselves make a livelihood out of it. So that is a booming. I mean, that is an area where we need to have further, I mean, thought process based on this, I mean, COVID. Thank you for uh, bringing in that dimension of uh, IT and ITS. In fact, uh, even before COVID, there were projections like uh, from uh, World Economic Forum about the future of jobs and the kind of disruptions happening. So for, with, with the COVID impacting all those things, so this IT and ITS is going to become more important. Again, you had mentioned in your presentation about the digital literacy skills that are needed and also the entrepreneurship opportunities. So would you would you comment on the entrepreneurship opportunities that would be available to young graduates in the post-COVID era, especially in IT ATS? True, right. Uh, entrepreneurship as such, you know, uh, in Kerala, I mean, uh, there is, I mean, we have, we, should, we have seen many good uh, kind of uh, startup companies coming up with the different ideas. Uh, our uh, different models of entrepreneurship, whether if it is by Kudumbashri or by IT mission or by industries department, if you really look, um, uh, many are at a grassroots level in the first scale where, you know, to take it to the next scale uh, by putting some kind of efforts in introducing more technology platforms and getting that into a businessable, viable business option. Uh, uh, these there needs to have a connectivity. I would say that we have good innovation cell. We have good uh, startup companies. How best the products and innovations of that startup companies and innovation that can be uh, that can be customized and that can be induced into the young uh, population who wants to start the enterprises. I mean, that kind of a synergy, that kind of a linking process for that, it's not an easy process. I can tell it very openly, but we need to have a system whereby the people are being entrepreneurial. Presently, we are providing entrepreneurship program for maybe for three days, five days, but it's not like that. It is a school of thought which needs to have minimum three to six months time where they are being system then getting into the projects then understanding the technology platform adopting that technology platform to the suitable business area getting the products and getting a marketability so there is a stream of programs and trainings which needs to be provided 
where a follow up linkages and upscaling mechanism needs to be catered so that area we need to further fine tune and come up with uh, structured programs in fact in vidinyam we were doing some sort of exercise for the unorganized sectors where we are undertaking training programs and supporting the system where it is taking almost 6 to 7 months let me tell you to be frank our business enterprise happens only after one i mean one year to one and a half year time if we immediately go for asking somebody to start a livelihood or entrepreneurial business uh, it will be very difficult to survive without having the basic understanding without having the market challenges and risks and where uh, understand their skill set understand the technology then getting into a business that is more important so that is an area we need to have further discussion getting mm -hmm. of uh, i mean uh, 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 sustainable projects in place with the different uh, i mean uh, players who are having well versed with the technologies but the mind of uh, people who need to do this kind of a business that needs to be clubbed uh, sir there is a question from one of the participants uh, you mentioned about the adani skill development center and its uh, various initiatives so the question is whether there are any, there are any opportunities for graduates say, say from different arts and science subjects to 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 get some some placements or to get to get engaged with this adani skill development center yeah in fact uh, i can tell you there are about different 45 different courses which are running by adani skill development center uh, placed in uh, i mean in, not in kerala but in other states in kerala we have centers only here right now in vinnyam but that centers uh, i mean i'll request i mean uh, people to go to the website that is www.asdc.com so that website is having all the details about what are the different courses offered and what are the eligibility criteria i mean it's like a, it's it's similar to many other skilling centers what has been run under nsdc and uh, what ssc sector skill council i mean uh, 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 portfolios i mean i i find that in kerala also there are many other i mean skilling centers putting their efforts in skilling and uh, uh employability area i mean that also an area i mean uh, i mean i would request everybody to have a look uh, because i have come to know that more than around close to 900 uh, nsdc partners uh, are having live training programs happening in kerala too so i mean uh, we can have explore all the opportunities not only one area but have all the opportunities we can look maybe from asap also we can uh, i mean showcase and we can provide the details of what are the nsdc partners and what kind of programs are going on so the district collector has just now informed over phone that he will be joining uh, uh, in the concluding part of this webinar so we are expecting him any minute uh, so we'll go on with the discussions so it is it is a very right. engaging uh, discussion you have touched almost all areas though you are you are you are, uh, you are working in a niche segment like uh, csr for coastal communities and uh, co regarding adani formation but you have touched every aspect of um, uh, jobs and careers so i would like to ask you in, in the beginning you mentioned about uh, initiatives of the adani skill development center in the area of developing youth and women so coming to women uh, are there any specific programs uh, aimed at developing skills of women uh, or, or, or empowering them to take on a new new life in the post covid era yeah uh, right now uh, what i have discussed was more on to the women uh, uh, empowerment program basically providing them livelihood training programs that's an area where we are i mean more focusing at uh, virinyam also i mean we have trained around 1300 women members on uh, the live i mean on the basic entrepreneurial that's a, i mean uh, five management modules which is the basic i mean platform where we train them on self management cash management idea to business leadership and debt management these are the five modules which set for the basic platform for them to understand what is a business what are the challenges and how best they can be fine tuned to this i mean atmosphere they have to first understand once this training module that happening around 3 months time the training module is completed then uh, they will able to understand what kind of project will be suiting them looking into the market system looking into the i mean available 
looking into the linkage is possible. So that the second stage is from three months to another two months time is project formulation, linkage building. So this is the time where maximum, for example, I can tell you, we have started one unit, which is called a clean for you. Clean for you is a group of five women who have started training in the cleaning industry. So now they have been awarded, the project has been formed for uh, getting high-end cleaning equipments. They have trained with some clean industry for around two, three months. And way that they have to use the things and uh, mm -hmm. uh, equipments. And now they have started using that for uh, cleaning of hospitals, cleaning of flats, cleaning of offices. They can also at the time parallelly employ their workforce in uh, many offices in the cleaning uh, sectors. So that is a big industry which we are finding that, I mean, the, it's not like a one-time, one-day training program or two-day training program. It is going on a phased way of around six to nine months time. So that way, the different, uh, I mean, uh, potential areas we have to understand. Now, even COVID after also, we need to see in the health sector, in, in, in the waste management sector, in uh, different cleaning industries, what are the openings which can be converted into uh, entrepreneurship? And let me tell you very frankly, this is practically possible and get into a business model if there is a good uh, technology platform which can connect to it. So that is something, I mean, which we can think further. Even we have many people who are, I mean, we, we can just create a platform. But the beauty is that how best those who are having different ideas, how best those who are having innovative solution, that can be provided through this platform, even to uh, who have been training, whether it is us or being some other training institute. If they go on an isolated mode, like a training program conducting and going. Sir, good morning, sir. Dr. Very good morning. Good morning. Sir, uh, we have been uh, discussing about the uh, kind of situation that is going to emerge after COVID. Like uh, you yourself has, uh, have been uh, heading a lot of operations as far as the people who are returning to the state. So there are going to be a lot of uncertainties when it comes to jobs and careers. So you're discussing all that. Us. Sir, thank you so much for coming to this session. We know how busy you are. This morning when I check your Facebook page, I could get, just get a feel of uh, your, your busy schedule. Thank you so much, sir. We'd like to uh, request you to say some few concluding remarks, sir. Uh, thank you for inviting me and um speaking a lot of words about the district administration we have been doing it okay actually i have not prepared uh, as such a uh, proper um, sp i mean speaking note for that but i will speak from my experience okay i am also a victim of uh, jobless for almost two years before, after completing my uh, engineering degree so i just speak to you my maybe like 10 minutes on this, uh, what we need to face, how we need to equip ourselves uh, to come out of this situation. Then maybe uh, some other day also, I can have a detailed uh, training or presentation also. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, dear students, okay, my, my, I mean, especially, I think, who are the audience actually? Basically, people who have completed their education and waiting oh, for sir, a sir. job or a business, right? Yes, sir. We, we are having graduates, sir kind of questions that are coming, they are mostly from students. Okay. So uh, everyone uh, has come across that student life. Okay. We, we do a lot of enjoyment. We have a lot of uh, uh, our own uh, entertainment and our, a lot of exams and all these things. But after completing all these things, and uh, especially on education front, but when, I, when you come to text, uh, the responsibility on your own shoulder, like going for employment, taking care of your family, then that is where all our problems starts. Till that point, 99% we are under uh, support of uh, families or society or different people, or brother, sister, a lot of supports were there. But when I come out of after your college education or uh, then, that is where uh, whether you are suitable to live in the uh, what is the society demands. That is where many of us are failing, it, including me, I also failed. It. When I passed my college engineering degree after my uh, mechanical engineering, uh, I was jobless for more than two and a half years because 
again, there's, there was the same situation like twin tower attack, and uh, now you have a equivalent situation like COVID situations. So, how better you are equipped to meet the practical issues? How better you are able to solve the issues which will directly affect the human being or people or your family, society, community, or a country? That is where your age is there over others. So when I say your age, that, that means you should have some kind of extra quality. It should not need to be something too big, something you need to have within 30 minutes of interview or within 45 minutes of interview, you should attract, impress the people who are in front of you. That is where your majority of your job is. Everybody is good in terms of doing jobs, but why should I select you over others? That is where the question, actual question comes. So if, you, if everyone is aware of self, and if you are able to know, uh, show yourself or you project yourself differently from others, I will um, definitely will be selected. I will tell you one simple question. I'm not going to give you any personal specific skills you need to do that. I will tell you one simple question based on which I got selected for IAS. For me, I was the last candidate for that day and my interview was 47 minutes. I was living in US for almost six, six and a half years. And uh, since I was living in US, you should see the difference of how I answered the question, not like US or something. Um, there was a obvious, I was expecting an obvious question that what is the difference between US and India? And before going to the interview, we prepare a lot of things that we have to tell this answer, that answer, but every answer was not uh, pleasing me. Okay. I just you think about it. I told them, sir, when I come out of Chennai airport, I'm from Tamil Nadu, I use Chennai airport very extensively. I used to start smoking and I used to spitting on the pillar right across the, in the airport. But when I come up, I don't do the same. This is the difference. This is the exact answer, exact word I used. No, I expect that in the UPSC interview, you answer this questions like this. Then there was a question. What was the difference? Why you do the same thing in Chennai? Why don't you do the same thing in JFK? JFK is again New York Airport. Uh, John Kennedy uh, Airport. That's a JFK. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what do you see? Then I started explaining them. So that is where the problem comes. When we in India we implement we do we have we have a rules regulation everything but we don't implement it properly on the ground. But where in the U.S. or others Western countries we have we are seeing that people in themselves knows what is their rights duties and the law implements implementing authority also act very efficiently implementing the laws objectively. When I say objectively means follow the rules and regulations very strictly irrespective of who is, your audience, who is in front of you. So that is where my answer. Then there was a again leading question. Why can't we do that in India? Why we are a, America were able to do that? Then there was answer. Then is it not uh, right? There was a question like that. So I, I clearly told them implementing law is not against human rights. When people are in the road, walking in the airport properly following the rules, it is not a disruption. Pillar is is it a uh, people right? Is a human right? It is exactly the same question to them. It's a rule, it's a regulation which makes 99 percentage of the people are happy. It's a problem one percent of people who stay percentage of people. So that is where then human rights part came in, uh, implementation part came in. Then why is our politicians are not doing well? Are they not enacting proper laws? So almost like 15 to 17 minutes, this question once I was able to control my entire interview only with this one question. This, I never thought about, I never say that India is so big, we have this much big, it's multi super country, they have good roads, they have a super power, they have this much military powers, 
their economic super growth, people are happy. I never said that. I said that on ground problem, what we face on the ground. I am talking to the real time situation on ground problems. That is what you are winning. If you are able to understand what you connect to what is happening on the ground, that's where your job ends. So I have trained after getting my first job in 2004 or 5, after spending more on nearly more than four years of this people, plus I skilled myself. Okay, and when I say I skilled myself, I studied mechanical engineering. And I was very reluctant to go as a lecturer job. I'm not saying the lecturer job is the, uh, some, um, uh, what do you say? Yeah. Low standards job. The problem is I am not good. So when I started working on it, I started keeping myself like where we are making it. Um, in every interview, there is a mistake, there is a learning. Success. So I'm from a very rural village. So there was no class like this before. So we learned everything on our own. So we mistakes were um, taken learning, and we were able to correct it subsequently. Once you are pointing at those mistakes, everybody's mistakes. Believe me, I had a lot of mis uh, problems. Everybody. Has mistakes, but but at the same time, we should point out what is our good qualities, what is our uh, problems, and should have a plan to sort out those problems. When it is planned, yeah, this plan will not be one day for plan or two days. Plan. For example, I used to, I come from a village where I started spitting on the road very normally. It's like a uh, you should be very conscious enough in your uh, plan and try to implement it. You are obviously, I mean, I mean, obviously fail, make the success. I mean, fail to su uh, succeed in every step. But you should not stop it. You should keep on trying, try, try, try. If you try one day, I mean, if you try two days, yes, you will fail. If you try one month, your success rate will be at least thirty to forty percent. If you try six months. That's what Anil was also saying that it's not a one day training, it was a one six months training, one week training, one I mean, one year training. If you try six months, your success rate will be. So, thank you so much for raising a very fundamental issue here that it all depends upon how we project ourselves and how we use the opportunity in a, in a very because uh, ultimately, irrespective of sector, irrespective of uh, jobs and all, it all depends upon how we market ourselves so uh, uh, the the, uh, the real real life example about your own experience is quite insightful sir uh, anil sir would you like to say something okay so uh, my uh, my point is you should have some small little edge over others that's first and how you are using your opportunity how you are showing One, how you are showing your effectiveness in the point one, that is more important and uh, another thing employability again yes there is a clear-cut um, study from different well-known institutions including harvard mit and our own iits 82 75 to 80 percent of the people who comes out of any college is um, not good for employable i mean it's not employable we don't connect to the reality. That is a major issue. We, our education system, I'm not saying that our education system is poor, but at the same time, I'm, our education system is not able to capable of catering this gap actually. When I say gap, yes. Today, if I go out of um, college, let's say I'm engineering or arts college, many times it depends on where you study and what you study. But what you study matters a lot than where you study. The where you study is the only component that comes when there is employability. Basically, when you study in a, let's say, IIT Madras and some fully started engineering college or in, um, let's say, in Thirunandabram, both are, if both of you studying in a mechanical engineering or a electrical engineering or a computer engineering, 
but the opportunity you get it when you are in iit madras and when you are in trivandrum is totally different you the exposure you get it will be totally different that is where four year study or three year study as a college student you can equip your skills you can in understand the industrial market very well what the demands what the possibility demands and try to spend uh, uh, your in college time i mean i won't say it again but at least last two years of your college time to analyze where you are standing in the in terms of what is required in the market whether let me there are many people who may go out of college and score first rank second rank third rank but their employability will be very very poor i have i have seen a person who has five years after seventh semester but he got after the college he got a very good job on his excellent now okay in within four years he is such a college person and he is like he is leading a team of like 200 to 300 people earning millions of rupees a week man so it's a depends on how yourself is uh, in meeting the employability i will be big point for you there are um, uh, the other issue is a risk especially after after covid 19 in uh, the situation there are in kerala there are many uh, people will be coming to kerala because our economy is a consumerism based economy and we have sent many people out of kerala whether in other states legal basically in sari more than 30 to 40 lakh people coming i mean uh, especially in gulf region we have another some some to tell people of uh, in india but outside of mental state people of our saying we be heading kerala to kerala in that case even including even we are planning to evacuate more than 3 to 4 lakh people from other places so they will be putting to the economy after this covid region region i mean uh, because they are not what to come back to india jobless they will be looking for new job so the the market in kerala needs has to cater those people also so since generally since these people are uh, uh, coming from uh, outside of uh, kerala and outside of india they are, know the market relatively better than you okay it can be a plumber it can be an engineer it can be a doctor it can be anyone so but how you are going to edge over them that is where your chance of getting top sort of success matters so think about it and attitude towards um, any society where i mean it should be very very applicable placing ga irukanu and undengil maatrame you will improve your personality development i have attended so many mock interviews here in um, various uh, colleges also here in the tuan ram after coming here for last two years student also in where and all areas they have to improve so those improvements those um, um suggestions should be taken very seriously once you take that as a very seriously like where you are standing comparing to others what is your personality how you can ensure that your personality is acceptable in the uh, one among the many people so if you spend concentrate more on that definitely your personal uh, approachable uh, approachability acceptability will be high and obviously for you uh, not only the interview result going forward also it will give you lot of edges over others that is where it matters so i'm going to tell you about uh, definitely your um, employability will be increasing and your i mean your marketability especially uh, not only employ um, uh, on a job front even approaching friends winning friends winning your people heart approach social problems like covid helping the society on that everything will be um, acceptable and will have a, a superior than others actually who is not have this kind of uh, personal skills so adanana pooru parayan ullade we will meet once again actually some other day when we are, when we are in a very normal days time uh, when we don't have this covid issues and all it's not so on these things i will do that okay thank you so much thank you sir thank you for all good thank words you. and also sir thank you for sharing your life experience it was quite useful to us sir
Dr. Ravi, and thanks, many thanks for being with us in this very important time when you are very busy. Thank you so much, sir. We would request you to come back to us when you are more free, sir. We would like to hear from you yeah. because yeah, yeah. you we understand you can motivate our students in a big way. Even in five minutes, you have taken your life and uh, motivated others. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Oh, no, this is very nice time. Actually, I mean, I like to speak at least once in a week, month with the ASAP if there is any conference thing. So that as a part of the district administration, also I like to. Uh, for arranging this and I like to see similar sessions in going forward so that it will be very helpful for a people who is in from Toronto. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, sir. thank you. Thank you. We are also quite privileged to have you. The session and your input uh, and you are a role model uh, which we will take it in our uh, young populace to understand how should we professionally equip our youth to get into the huge aspiration level what they have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay Kiran, sir. Thank you, thank you, so much, sir. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you.